On the edge of Barcelona, researchers are working on an ambitious project that could change the future of healthcare centred around the body's most crucial organ. Thanks to advances in science and technology, our understanding of the human heart is getting better and better, so much so that we can create digital copies of it. But as I'm about to find out, that involves some serious computer power. This is the home of Europe's latest supercomputer. We've been invited in right as it's being switched on. Here we go. So this is the supercomputer. This is my Nostrum 5, the new system we are installing in Barcelona. So it's more than 7,000 nodes. To put that in context, your personal computer or laptop would usually count as one node. Yeah. And every cabin of this, this cabin, Lots. 102 disks, every one of 18 terabytes. So the total row capacity is 350 petabytes. One of the characteristics of the system is the weight. Do you want to try to push it? Oh, this is heavy. It's heavy, huh? Very heavy, yeah. And expensive. I feel like I'm in a china shop trying not to break anything. So all the supercomputers is connected by a net high-speed network. We have built this glass tiles so you can see all the infrastructure. Yeah. All of this computing power is generating a lot of heat. So now this is the back part, where all the cables are coming through from the basement, and this is the heat uh, you cannot it. feel on the TV. There are pipes carrying cold water to cool it all down. The hot water that comes out is used to heat the rest of the building. The supercomputer is able to contribute to research in many different fields at the same time, from engineering to predicting climate change. But researchers here are also using it to study the human body and do medical tests virtually. Today we can model a, a beating heart, so we can model the, the physiology, the mechanical contraction of the, of the tissue, of the muscle, and also the, the fluid the blood mechanics inside the ventricles and atria and vessels. And if you kind of peel back the skin, as it were, of the virtual heart, it's basically lots of numbers and maths and, and calculations. Nature can be interpreted using mathematics. We describe your heart with, uh, with equations in a mathematical model, and then this mathematical model is translated to a, a computer program. The beating hearts created are not generic. They can be based on an individual's data and used to determine if different drugs or treatments will actually work for that person. In a very similar way that in a, in a, in a real clinical trial in which you test a therapy on a cohort of people, we can do the same but on a cohort of virtual, virtual hearts. By uh, exploring different pathways for innovation, they can have better products, um, faster, cheaper, and, and more sophisticated that can come finally to the, to the patient. It's estimated it would take 57 billion years for a human to attempt the calculations needed to create a beating heart. The supercomputer can do it in just nine hours. This latest update in the tech will help scientists delve even further into healthcare, but that requires medical staff and patients to trust the technology. The team here aren't just going to stop at hearts. They'd like to create a full replica of a human, but with all the different movements and contractions that happen internally that we don't even think about, there's still a long way to go before that's possible.